Hi, I'm Travis Christensen with Northwest Lyman College. Here we have a standard high voltage glove with no obvious signs of damage. We placed it on this mold to simulate a worker's hand. So let's see what happens when we bring an energized source near the hand. Obviously, electricity has a way of finding defects easily missed by the naked eye. That's why OSHA requires you to perform a thorough inspection of your rubber gloves before each use. Let's take a look at the inspection I did before this demonstration, and before going any further, be sure to check the test state. To inspect my gloves according to ASTM standards, I'll first gently roll the entire outside surface between my hands. Always inspect both the outside and inside surface of each glove. If you find any suspicious areas, perform a more careful inspection by gently pinching and rolling the rubber between your fingers. Pay special attention to the base and tips of the fingers and thumb. Carefully pull them apart, looking for any irregularities. Let's move on to the next part of the inspection, the inflation test. There's two ways to inflate gloves, either manually or using the portable inflator. To do it manually, roll the glove up about one and a half inches. This will trap air in the palm and fingers of the glove. Then squeeze it and hold it up to your ear, listening and feeling for any air leaks. I can feel an air leak in the palm of this glove. At this point, you should destroy and throw away the glove. But before we do that, let's do the other test using the portable inflator. First slide the glove over the inflator. Once you get the base of the glove over the inflator, roll the rubber o-ring onto the glove. This will prevent the glove from flying off when you inflate it. Now inflate the glove. Make sure that you don't over inflate it. This particular glove is a type 1 glove, which is non-resistant to ozone. It should never be inflated more than twice its normal size. If you have a type 2 glove, which is ozone resistant, it should never be inflated more than one and a quarter times its size. Once again, hold the glove up to your ear and listen and feel for any air leaks. And sure enough, I can feel the air leaking out of the palm of this glove. I prefer to use the portable inflator because it gives me the ability to air test the entire glove, not just the palm and fingers. Keep in mind, if you work for a company that has state OSHA regulations, you may have more requirements for rubber glove inspection. It just took a single pinhole to ruin this glove, so it's extremely important that you always inspect your gloves before each use and immediately following any incident that could have caused damage. It's the only way to be sure that you're protected. For Northwest Lyman College, I'm Travis Christensen. Work safe out there.